Men, and as usual, I use the term loosely. Uh, we're not going to be using any tools today uh, unless you consider a book a tool. Uh, this is kind of a follow-up to last week's video about handlebars, handlebar wiring on a uh, 2020 uh, M8. And uh, I learned several things. Actually, quite a few things are kind of interesting. Uh, maybe they're not interesting to you, but I thought they were interesting. And like I say, I did learn something just by putting handlebars on. So uh, let's digress a little bit and uh, talk about a basic thing. Back in the olden days, and I'm going to call the olden days BC. BC stands for before computers. Anyway, back in the olden days, if a guy wanted to turn a light bulb on, he had a battery. And, you know, there's going to be interrelated wires, etc., etc. But basically, to turn a light bulb on, he had a wire that went to the light bulb. And we'll draw a light bulb over here. And uh, one side's connected to one of the titties on the bottom of the light bulb. And the other side of the light bulb uh, goes to maybe a switch, or maybe the switch is over here. It really doesn't matter. Uh, and then the other end of the wire went to ground. So to turn that light bulb on, you took a switch and you closed it. And electricity flowed around the circuit. And the light bulb glowed. That is BC, before computers. Uh, nowadays, and we're going to call this AD, after digital computers do it. And just to give you kind of a point of reference, uh, this is a diagram from a 2007 uh, FXD. And uh, this is the conventional BC method of doing things. You got a battery, uh, you got a fuse holder, uh, the wires went from uh, the battery and the fuse holder to the ignition switch. And when you turn the key on the switch, you completed the circuit to the accessory terminal. And the accessory terminal had wires on it, of course. And uh, we're looking at the turn signal wires just because. Uh, we're comparing apples to apples because I got turn signal wires on the uh, uh, FXST we're going to look at. And the wire, you know, went to one turn signal on one hand grip and the other uh, turn signal switch on the other hand grip. But anyway, when you pushed that button, you completed the circuit on this wire. Electricity came out of the wire, went through this gadget. This is called the Turn Signal and Security Module. But really, this is nothing more than, well, it's a little bit more than, but this is basically your old uh, tungsten bimetallic flasher unit. So uh, wire... Uh, electricity in a wire comes in from the switch and the battery, and it goes out to, in this case, uh, where did it go? Right turn signal feed, around here, over to this, boom, to the light bulb. And the other end of the light bulb is connected to this wire that gangs these three little indicators together, the turn signals and the high beam. Oh, actually, and the high beam. Okay. Okay. And uh, the other, uh, other side of this thing uh, all comes out on this black wire or weaves around here. Anyway, it ends up being a ground back here at the uh, uh, turn signal and security match. But this is the typical system uh, motorcycles and cars and trucks have used for, you know, 80 years probably since they had turn signals. Uh, the difference in this one being this electronic flasher built into the turn signal and security module. Uh, what I learned nowadays, and let me get rid of this. Okay, so in this new AD, after digital world, uh, let's talk about how a modern Harley, 
uh, turns on a turn signal. Uh, there is a switch, of course, in each end of the handlebar. And uh, what's inside there, I don't know, because the book doesn't tell you, but you know, here's a button, there's a button, here's a switch. Uh, inside the switch is a microprocessor unit. So uh, let's just call this one uh, A1, and let's just call this one A2. This address is programmed into these things. So if I took the A2 one and I plugged it into the A1 hole, this one is going to turn on the left-hand turn signal no matter where it's plugged in. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So coming out of these things are four wires, but we're only going to talk about two right now. We're going to talk about two wires that are connected on a digital data bus. The digital data bus goes, of course, back to the computer. And when I press this button, it identifies itself to the computer as the left-hand turn signal module and that the computer should therefore turn on the left-hand turn signals. Now, there might be many similar such boxes attached to the same data bus. And the thing that these all have in common is they're all wired exactly the same and, the, all, and all the plugs are interchangeable. So I could take whatever this thing is and I could plug it in over there. I could take this thing and I could plug it in over there. Well, maybe this is a tachometer. Maybe this is a speedometer. I could plug that speedometer into the left-hand turn signal and it will still work. I could take the left-hand turn signal switch and I could plug it into where the speedometer was and it will still work. Anyway, once the computer uh, gets the command to turn on a turn signal, it will output a voltage to uh, the turn signal. My crew turn signal ball, and the light will come on. Now, there, this might not be exactly how it's hooked up. Well, it pretty much is exactly how it's hooked up. So let's look at the diagram and find the evidence for this. Okay, so here is the diagrams that go with uh, the 2020 Milwaukee 8 I was working on. Uh, you might have seen bits and pieces of this in last week's video. But anyway, here is the left-hand LHCM, left-hand control module. And over here is the uh, right-hand control module. So anyway, um, the wires, although named differently over here, uh, are the same on both of them. The colors are the same. They go to connectors and the pin layouts are the same. They are the same. Um, and these are the switches with a digital processor in them and an address in them. So this one knows it's a lefty. This one knows it's a righty. Uh, when you see this little symbol on here, which is a little hard to make out, it means that this is a twisted pair of wire. Twisted pairs of wire are almost always data bus wires. So the diagram says C backbone harness one of three. So we're over to the backbone harness one of three, and here are the other two ends of those connectors. And if you follow this through, and you line up all the dots where the connections are made, uh, you'll see that this, this, all of these things over here, and some other things I haven't shagged down, are all connected to the same four wires. So whatever this thing is over here, I could plug it in over here. Whatever's plugged in over here, I could plug in over there. And because these are unique devices with an address program into them, they will work no matter where on the data bus they are plugged in. So anyway, uh, that goes back to here and it says main harness three of three. So we'll flip over to the main harness three of three. Uh, those four wires come in over here and you could see that they are, well, you could see they're connected over here. 
Uh, you could see they're connected over here and go other places. But one of the things a data bus has in common is that uh, wherever the data bus ends, there will be a gadget called the terminator, a data terminator. And on a modern Harley, the data terminator is right here. All these wires come together uh, and the data bus ends right here. Uh, so we know it's a data bus because it has a terminating resistor on it. And if you look at this thing, uh, let's see. Oh, it comes into a CAN low and the other one comes into a CAN high. That stands for control area network. So there is a plus five voltage on this one and a minus five voltage on this one. And I'm just guessing at that because most computers with this type of a system run on plus and minus five volts. It could be something else and it really doesn't matter. But anyway, uh, your ones and your zeros are all flowing on this data bus, on this pair of wires that loops all over the motorcycles. Uh, so what you say, well, <laughs> It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. You now have a computer that controls everything. It allows for versatility of wiring. Like I say, you can move the gadgets around, and I haven't done the experiment yet. I might someday, but uh, uh, you could run uh, all these devices that are compatible with this network and plug them in anywhere on the network because these data buses are all paralleled and the items have addresses on them so they will function no matter where they are installed. But anyway, that's how new Harleys are wired up. I was unaware of that. So now, in order to fully engage uh, the potential of the internet, uh, I'm going to engage in some wild ass speculation. It has no basis in fact or reality. Hey, it could be true, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But well, let's just say you're banging down the road on your before computer old iron head and you're doing about 3000 RPM at 60 miles per hour. So you're probably doing a relatively low frequency uh, that would be about 50 cycles per second, 50 hertz vibration at that RPM. Uh, it's a high amplitude vibration because the bike shakes a lot. Low frequency, high amplitude. And let's just say, uh, you know, you're an old wire and you're connected to a turn signal and you're banging down the road at your 50 hertz vibration and you're flexing back and forth uh, with a high amplitude and actually this is probably if I could bend it. That's a good example right there And let's say you got a gob of solder holding you on to a connector and You're vibrating down the road and your wires going like this What's gonna happen? That's gonna break uh, You know Harley does things to minimize that uh, Like even on this thing. There's a little bit of a sleeve there that will minimize the flexing right at the joint. Get it back in there, there we go. Uh, but still, you know, you're going down the road like this the whole time. Eventually this is gonna break. Or maybe you're crimp crimped, or maybe you're crimped into one of these cheesy connectors that Harley used to use. Uh, you're an old wire, you're gonna break eventually. And uh, this system of wiring and method of controlling the wiring worked on old bikes with high vibration. Uh, the, the wiring tolerated it. But you know, on a modern system, on one of these, on one of these where you've got tens of thousands of ones and zeros traveling back and forth on this twisted pair of wiring, any loose connection in here is going to play havoc with uh, the system. It's just not going to work right if you've got connections being made and unmade due to vibration. Or, or if you break one of 
the data bus wires that goes to the computer and the CAN bus high, the CAN bus low, or the 12 volts that powers it, or the ground that grounds it, you will lose all the equipment on that bus. Uh, not a desirable thing. So here's my proposal. Uh, everybody had a fit when Harley discontinued the rubber mounted motors uh, when the M8s came out. And what was that? That was about 2017 or thereabouts. And guys were up in arms over, geez, the dinos are gone. There's no rubber mounted motors. What are we going to do? This sucks. Harley killed them off. And the reason I say that is because uh, those motors vibrated more than the B motors that are in the M8s. So uh, I don't think Harley believed that their wiring can handle the vibration of not a balanced motor. Um, and, and they said, well, you know what? We want to go to the computer system and control everything. We want to use all these data buses. We need wiring that's 100% reliable. And yeah, we could beef up the wiring and we could do things. But you know what? The root of the problem is vibration. So we need to get rid of as much of that vibration as we possibly can. So they killed off the rubber mounted motors. Anyway, my two cents worth, uh, take it or leave it, believe it or not. Uh, but yeah, that's what I think happened.